In Inner Mongolia, China, a vast, crusty lake of radioactive black sludge stretches out, a toxic byproduct of refining rare earth elements. These 17 metals are the unseen backbone of modern technology, critical for everything from smartphones and EV motors to fighter jets. Yet, despite their name, rare earths aren't geologically rare. The real rarity is the ability to process them. In fact, processing rare earths not mining them is the real bottleneck in the global supply chain. Today, China dominates this stage. It controls nearly 90% of the world's rare earth processing capacity, meaning even ore mined elsewhere often must be sent to China for refining. This chokehold has huge implications. When diplomatic spats or export restrictions arise, entire industries feel the shock. The world learned this in 2010 when a cut of Chinese exports sent rare earth prices soaring and jolted policymakers awake. The lesson? Securing rare earth supply isn't just about finding mines, it's about innovating how we separate and purify these metals. How are rare earths processed today? Usually through intensive roasting, acid leaching and solvent extraction. Ores like basnesite or monazite are roasted and dissolved in strong acids. Then the mixed rare earths are separated by liquid-liquid solvent extraction, essentially mixing the acidic solution with an organic solvent, often kerosene plus special extractant molecules, and repeating hundreds of times. This method, largely developed in the mid-20th century, requires over 100 stages of mixer settlers and uses toxic, flammable solvents. It's effective at isolating each element, but notoriously inefficient and polluting. The separation process is not selective enough. It has to be repeated many times. The whole method is cumbersome and creates unnecessary waste, admits chemical engineer Kathleen Steeb. Huge volumes of acidic wastewater and chemical sludge result, the kind responsible for that poisoned lake in China. The environmental toll is severe. Traditional rare earth refining generates radioactive thorium-laced waste, greenhouse gas emissions from roasting and acidified tailings. One study noted that solvent extraction alone accounts for about 30% of the environmental impact in rare earth oxide production. It's no wonder strict regulations have shut down processing in the US and EU, leaving producers to ship concentrate to Asia. The status quo is clearly unsustainable, but around the world scientists and engineers are racing to rewrite the script. One approach rethinks the chemistry itself. Can we separate rare earths with fewer steps, less waste, and greener reagents? Recent breakthroughs suggest yes. For example, researchers at Oak Ridge National Lab and Idaho National Lab develop new ligand extractants that dramatically outperform the old reagents. The current industry workhorse is a phosphorus-based extractant, PC88A, with low selectivity. It barely prefers one rare earth over another, forcing countless stages and generating heaps of waste. The team at Oak Ridge designed a better molecule, a diglycolamide, or DGA, that binds certain rare earths much more strongly. In tests, this new solvent extraction agent had over double the separation power of the conventional extractant. Fewer stages would be needed to get high purity, meaning a simpler, cleaner process with far less chemical sludge. In 2021, this technology was licensed to a US company to scale up production of these improved solvents, a step toward greener solvent extraction that could cut the toxic footprint of rare earth refining. Others are reinventing the equipment. Traditional solvent extraction uses open vats, but membrane-based extraction promises a more contained, efficient system. Oak Ridge's Ramesh Bave spent a decade developing a membrane solvent extraction process, or MSX, which is now being tested at the Pea Ridge Mine in Missouri. The MSX system uses porous hollow fibers impregnated with a neutral extractant acting like a chemical filter. As mixed rare earth solutions pass through, the fibers coating acts as a traffic cop, selectively letting rare earth ions diffuse across the membrane while keeping unwanted elements out. This yields a concentrated rare earth solution that can be refined to over 99.5% pure oxides. Compared to brute force acid separation, the membrane method uses far less energy and solvent. In late 2023, Oak Ridge signed a deal with Caldera Resources, which owns Pea Ridge 
to integrate MSX into a pilot plant, a public-private push to prove this cleaner technology at scale. Meanwhile, ion exchange resins, the very technology used to first discover rare earths, are making a comeback in high-tech form. Instead of hundreds of solvent-filled tanks, imagine columns of specialized resin beads that capture rare earth ions as solution flows through. In Florida, a company called K Technologies is pioneering a continuous ion exchange, or CIX, and ion chromatography process to separate rare earths from a South African feedstock. Rainbow Rare Earths, which is developing the Falaborwa tailings project, reports that this resin-based method replaces traditional solvent extraction entirely, eliminating the toxic organic solvents and massive mixer settler arrays. The pilot plant, launched in 2024, has begun successfully pulling out high-purity neodymium, praseodymium, dysprosium and terbium, the key magnet metals. This innovative use of an old technology ion exchange shows promise for a cleaner modular separation plant that could be deployed closer to mines or even at recycling facilities. Even supercritical fluids, essentially tunable solvents at high pressure, are being explored to avoid harsh acids altogether. Scientists at Washington University in St. Louis developed a method to extract rare earths from coal fly ash using supercritical CO2 with added chelating agents. The results are, well, striking. No liquid or organic waste is produced, energy use is much lower than roasting, and the process yielded rare earths at ten times higher purity than conventional leaching. In fact, the team showed the approach works with supercritical nitrogen, or air, as well, highlighting its flexibility. While still in the lab, or pilot stage, such supercritical fluid extraction could potentially be a dry mining technique that sidesteps the huge volumes of wastewater in current refineries. Other groups, like CF Technologies in Massachusetts, are also piloting supercritical CO2 to strip rare earths from ore and recycled magnets in a cleaner way. Not all solutions are chemical or mechanical, some are biological. Bioleaching, using microbes to extract metals, has long been used in copper and gold mining. Now researchers are applying it to rare earths. Certain bacteria and fungi can dissolve rare earth-bearing minerals by producing organic acids. This process works even on low-grade ores or mine waste that would be uneconomical to process conventionally. The advantages? Lower energy use and less pollution than roasting and strong acids. For example, acidophilic bacteria have been shown to leach rare earths from clays and phosphor powder waste, freeing the metals into solution. Researchers have even experimented with two-stage biorecovery. First, bacteria leach the rare earths, then algae or other microbes absorb and concentrate them. One study demonstrated combining bacteria with algae like Euglena and Chlamydomonas to recover yttrium and europium from fluorescent lamp waste. Though bioleaching is slower than chemical methods and not yet widely commercial for rare earth elements, it holds appeal as an eco-friendly mining technique, perhaps one day literally growing our rare earth supply in bioreactors instead of open pits. In a similar vein, scientists are looking to biomolecules for smarter separation. Molecular recognition technology seeks to mimic nature's exquisite selectivity to grab one metal over others. A team at University of Pennsylvania, for instance, is designing peptide molecules inspired by calcium-binding proteins to selectively latch on to specific rare earth ions. By copying the EF hand motif that in our bodies can tell calcium apart from magnesium, they've created peptide fragments that preferentially bind lanthanides despite their chemical similarity. The goal is an eco-friendly, bio-inspired separation process. Imagine an aqueous solution where these peptide hands pluck neodymium or dysprosium out of a mix with surgical precision without kerosene or toxic reagents. It's still experimental but supported by the U.S. Department of Energy, highlighting how important such breakthroughs could be. Another exciting avenue is using advanced materials as custom separators. Metal Organic Frameworks, or MOFs, these porous crystalline structures, sometimes called molecular sponges, are being tailored to trap rare earths. 
At Sandia National Labs, researchers have been tweaking zirconium-based MOFs to selectively absorb certain rare earth element ions from solution. By adding functional groups to the MOF's internal surfaces, they achieved significant uptake of rare earths. Interestingly, they also found that defects in the MOF, like missing linkers, can actually improve metal capture. This work suggests a future where we could essentially dial in a material that soaks up, say, dysprosium while ignoring others, then recover the dysprosium by switching conditions. MOF-based separation could reduce the need for multi-step solvent processes, basically acting as a sieve on the molecular level. Finally, artificial intelligence and machine learning are lending a hand to accelerate innovation. Rather than relying on trial and error in the lab for each new extractant or resin, researchers are deploying AI to predict what works. A 2022 study used deep neural networks to predict solvent extraction outcomes for different ligand molecules training on past experimental data. The AI model successfully identified new extractant candidates with better performance, which were then synthesized and validated in real life. This kind of high throughput in silico screening can really speed up the discovery of optimal separation chemistry. Similarly, AI and robotics are being used to optimize process conditions, for instance, adjusting pH, temperature and flow in a pilot plant on the fly to maximize separation efficiency. Now, these digital tools won't replace the physical tech, but they can shave years off development and help ensure we zero in on the most promising solutions faster. Beyond improving how we process mined ore, a parallel revolution is underway. Extracting rare earths from unconventional resources, basically mining the waste of modern society. Electronic waste, or e-waste, is a huge target. Discarded smartphones, computers and appliances contain significant amounts of rare earths in components like hard drive magnets, speakers and fluorescent phosphors. With over 52 million tonnes of e-waste generated globally in 2021, there's a vast urban mine of rare earths waiting to be tapped. The challenge, of course, is economically collecting and extracting them. Governments and companies in Japan, the EU and the US are investing in technologies to do just that. For instance, Japan has launched urban mining initiatives to recycle rare metals from used electronics, driven by lessons from past supply scares. In the US, the Department of Defense has funded projects to recycle rare earth magnets from old equipment, recognizing that reclaiming these materials could help buffer against supply disruptions. For now, e-waste recycling of rare earth elements is still limited. Less than 1% of rare earth magnets are currently recovered from end-of-life products. But even small pilot programs are important steps toward a circular economy. Coal and mining wastes are another frontier. Coal ash and acid mine drainage, usually seen as liabilities, contain diluted rare earth values that can be concentrated. In West Virginia, a pilot plant is extracting rare earths from acid mine drainage fluids, simultaneously cleaning up polluted water while obtaining oxide concentrates. The United States Department of Energy has invested in several such projects, seeing a win-win for coal communities to produce critical minerals from the billions of tons of coal waste. And as mentioned, processes like the supercritical carbon dioxide method can turn coal ash into a rare earth element source with no liquid waste. Similarly, companies are eyeing mine tailings, leftover ore dumps from earlier mining as potential resources. For example, in South Africa, Rainbow is sourcing rare earths from old phosphate mine gypsum piles at Falaborwa, proving that yesterday's waste can truly be today's feedstock. Perhaps the most headline-grabbing recycling effort is magnet-to-magnet -magnet recycling. Neodymium iron boron magnets, or NDFEB magnets, are the most important rare earth product by value. They're used in electric vehicle motors, wind turbines and electronics. Recovering and reusing them could massively reduce the need for new mining. Several startups have developed ways to do this. In the UK, Hypromag uses a hydrogen-based process known as HPMS to break down scrap magnets into a powder that can be resintered into new magnets. Over in the US, Novion Magnetics, formerly Urban Mining Company, has built a plant in Texas to produce new magnets from recycled ones with backing from the Department of Defense. 
The appeal is, well, pretty clear. A recent life cycle analysis found that directly recycling NDFEB magnets can save up to 90 to 95 percent of the energy compared to producing them from mined oxides. That translates to a huge reduction in carbon footprint and resource use. Additionally, recycling keeps these critical materials in country, improving supply chain security. And as volumes of end-of-life magnets grow, an estimated 600,000 tonnes of NDFB magnets will be retired by 2035. Magnet recycling could become a major piece of the rare earth puzzle. All these innovations carry profound implications. If successful, they promise to diversify and democratise the rare earth supply chain, making it more resilient and sustainable. Right now, as we've seen, a single country's chokehold on processing can send geopolitical shockwaves. By investing in new processing technologies, nations are effectively trying to break China's monopoly on the high ground of the supply chain. The United States, for instance, has created a critical materials institute and is funding pilot plants from California to Florida to prove homegrown separation methods. Europe is actively supporting rare earth processing projects, from Estonia's new separation facilities to recycling programs as it seeks to cut near total dependence. The EU has imported up to 98% of its rare earth elements from China in recent years. Japan, after its 2010 scare, not only stockpiled materials but also poured money into both upstream mining in friendly countries and downstream innovations like recycling and even deep sea mud extraction research. Australia and Canada rich in rare earth resources, are launching their own processing plants and R&D efforts. Australia's Linus Corporation runs a major separation plant in Malaysia and is building one in the US, while Canadian firms are piloting advanced separation technologies like UCOR's Rapid Six system. This system uses an accelerated solvent extraction technique with computer automation. Even China is exploring cleaner processes. Chinese researchers have proposed electric field separation to reduce the environmental damage of ion adsorption clay mining. It's a reminder that innovation is needed globally to make using rare earths sustainable. Crucially, many of these efforts involve public-private partnerships. Governments bring funding and urgency, while private firms and research labs bring technical expertise. We see this hybrid model in action. The Missouri MSX Pilot, a collaboration between ORNL and Caldera. The Florida Ion Exchange Pilot, combining Rainbow and KTEC. The Texas Magnet Recycling Plant, backed by the Department of Defense and Novion, and many more. Such collaborations are accelerating the translation of lab discoveries like new solvents, membranes and bioprocesses into real-world plants. They also illustrate how solving the rare earth challenge isn't just a scientific quest but a strategic one. Supply chain resilience, national security and environmental sustainability all intersect here. A more diverse set of processing technologies and locations means no single point of failure creating a global market less prone to crisis. And cleaner technologies mean we can ramp up rare earth production to meet surging demand for electric vehicles, wind turbines and electronics without poisoning communities or the planet. After decades in the shadows, the unsexy work of rare earth processing is entering a renaissance. From bacteria that biomine metals to designer molecules that outsmart chemistry to high-tech recycling that treats old gadgets as ore, these innovations could redefine how we supply the critical elements of the 21st century. The stakes are high, get it right, and we build a supply chain that is secure, sustainable and scalable. Fall behind and we remain vulnerable to bottlenecks, geopolitical tensions and boom-bust cycles. The momentum is building around the world as engineers, chemists and entrepreneurs tackle one of the most challenging industrial puzzles of our time. In the coming years... Watch for these pilot projects scaling up and new ideas emerging. The rare earth race is on, and it's not about finding resources, but about unlocking them cleanly and efficiently. Which technology to do think has the most promise? Subscribe for more and let's discuss.